Child Initiative as well as the Boy Initiative. With me in the studio, I have got Marvin from the Biodegraded Cosmetics Consultant. I have got Paskazi Abirunji from the Technical Person of Chambogo University, Faculty of Vocational Studies. I have with me Winnie, Winifred Kajumba, the leather technician from the Beauty and uh, Apro Innovation. And lastly, I have got Georgina, Kaj Georgina Amasha, the cosmetics technician, consultant. Thank you, viewers. And um, I'd like to start with you. Welcome to the show. And uh, could you tell us about yourself, who you are, what you do? Thank you very much. My name is Abahu Marvin, and I'm a consultant of Pretty's Biodegradable Hair. And I'm here at the Beauty and Apron Science and Innovation Expo. Pasi? Paskazi Abirunji. I'm representing Chambogo University, Faculty of Vocational Studies, Department of Human Nutrition and Home Economics. And in this exhibition, I'm under beauty and apparel innovations. I'm Kajumba Winnie from, from Leather Technician. I come from COVAB, College of Veterinary Medicine from Makere University under AFRISA. My name is Georgina Amasha and I'm in the lawyer group and um, I'm in the beauty and apparel sector today and we are so happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming to represent the chain economy of uh, beauty and apparel today. Um, first of all, I would like to start by crediting our Honorable Minister, Dr. Monica Mosenero, for putting up such a fantastic event. Being the first event, I think this has been epic. It's been the best so far, and I'm sure we are going to improve for the years to come. First and foremost, we are also grateful that finally the Butan APRO has gotten a space in the Science and Innovation Expo. Many people tend not to think that this is part and parcel of our daily life. We live by the day using daily households, cosmetics, um, be it the shoes we wear. Our day-to-day -day life depends on this chain link chain economy which is the beauty um i would like to come to marvin from the beauty what do you do what inspired you to do this okay thank you very much now well i have a product here it's lit biodegradable here i hope you can see it can now this hair it? is made from a product all of you know banana fiber which is this product right here so literally this is the most natural hair you ever see on the market. It's made completely from banana fiber and, well, let's say it has the best advantages. I see women these days. I use a lot of uh, braids, yeah. I've always braided. Women love hair and like women need it. Hair can never run out. But you see, my problem was eh, is that we, no one knew that actually anyone could make hair from fibers in. No, I never knew that because women are stuck with plastics. Yeah. And I hear plastics have disadvantages on women's skulls, right? Yeah, so we it. decided that why don't we go for something natural? So that's where we found out that we can actually make hair from fiber. And later on, I'll tell you one of its characteristics. Right. right. And um, welcome to Pasi. What motivated you? What inspired you? And what is different from the Chambogo products to the rest of the market? Thank you so much. Uh, as Marvin is saying, that really there, there is no reason why we shouldn't explore our environment. 
Our inspiration was basically the problem, the challenge that we are having at the fashion industry, whereby the waste from fashion industries is all over and is blocking all our drainages. So our niche is about recycling and adding value to locally available materials such that we can also support or suppress uh, import, importing of those other things from, from outside. So the niche, we are recycling waste, bovera, we make a tablecloth uh, table out of them, uh, thread from industries, we can make doormats and the rugs and the carpets. Then again, waste thread from industries. This is the waste from t-shirts, industries that make t-shirts. We pick them up and then we make a uh, wall hanging. This is a wall hanging and it has some messages that is giving, uh, especially in our culture as people of Uganda. Thank you so and, um, much. And <clears throat> I think to add on what uh, Percy has just said, we hope that uh, we can be recognized, followed by meaningful support. Meaningful support, I mean by tax relief, so that we are able to import with a bit of tax relief and, of course, other meaningful support to support the industry. Winnie, tell us about how you do this leather. I see you have beautiful stuff. How do you come up with that? Thank you very much. Uh, we start all the way from the farm, how the farmers treat the animals, how they feed them, which water they take, the comfort they get. So basically, if they're beating up the animals, they have scratches, they have scars. It really affects us in the leather industry because if you're having animals with damages, with damages, it will be more costly for us because you're wasting a lot of materials, a lot of chemicals using, you, doing your products and making leather. So basically, we come from scratch, from hides and skins. We process them to make leather to a value added to the shoes that you're seeing in front of me. That's what we do. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. And Winnie, I can see your shining. I'm sure that is your product. Tell us about Shia Butter, how you do it, how your journey has been so far. smallholder farmers that grow the shea nuts and we help them in sensitizing them on how best they can do their farming, how best they can improve their families through the money that they get from, 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 from us when, when we buy the shea nuts. So besides us just making the products, we also do, we also do sensitization and educating of these, these women in those areas because we do not just buy from them the shea nuts, but we also help them in a way in that they are able to educate their children, they're able to take care of their homes and all those other things that come along there. Yes, so that is basically our journey and we are looking forward to get more opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, coming back to Percy, could you tell us what makes your product from Chambogo Vocational Studies different from the rest of the market? What makes you special? What makes you come out? 
Thanks so much, moderator. Uh, given the core value of Chamago University, ensuring high quality of output and service delivery, products from Chambago University are well selected, researched, and then tasted for the good health of the people who use them. On top of that, they are durable. When you consider uh, uh, bags that we normally get, I'm not going to mention any countries, and with that bag and the laptop bag that is there in front there, these bags are durable and they can last for long. And you find that when we are manufacturing our products, we take care of the environment. The, we don't throw away waste, we recycle, we recycle our waste and make some good and uh, beauty, beautiful things that can be put in our houses for beauty, that can be laid on our tables. You know, you get something which is beautiful out of that waste. We don't waste. Right. Um, coming back to you, Georgina, uh, you attracted me with your beauty. Um, I just want to find out a person that has come to this exhibition, why would they come to your tent? Why would they come to, to your site? Thank you so much. So just like I said, when we do not just produce the product Shea Butter, but we also do, we also do women empowerment and, and, and do all those other things alongside that. So when you're purchasing a product from us, you're not only just going to have a good skin or good hair, but you're also helping a woman in the, in the northern parts of Uganda. You're helping her take her children to school. You're helping her get something for her family. So basically, what, 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 would, what would help you or what would give you the urge to come to my store where we are is, 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 is that you're not just, first of all, the product itself is a very good product because our shea nuts go through grading. We grade them from grade A and we make sure that what we use for the skin care is grade A, which is the best shea butter. And mind you, Uganda has the best shea butter, the northern part of Uganda, which is called the Nilotica. It's very good for our skins. So, but you don't just get the, the good skin, but you're also helping someone out there. So that is basically why you should all come and visit my store. And I think to add on what you just said, I think like people say black is beautiful, we are nearest to natural products. We are naturally beautiful and with the, the support of our products, I think we can even improve and even do better, add on the economy. I don't see why a, a Ugandan should travel to Nairobi for a holiday and come back with shea butter when we in the north, we produce the best. As a matter of fact, why would we see a lot of English people, they come here, they take loads of that. So why wouldn't Ugandans support our products? Yeah. I just feel like Ugandans, we have to stop the mentality of thinking that, oh, we are not authentic. We are authentic and we are naturally beautiful and uh, we have the best materials, the best products to produce beautiful things for our country and to build the economy at large. So Winnie, I can see you have got men's shoes for builders even. How do you do that? The shoe that you're seeing in front of me that you have called a, men, a men's builder shoe, it's called a safety boat. The reason as to why we call it a safety boat, it has a steel cap on the toes. In that when you knock anything that is to do with stones, metals, what, it will still protect your toes from getting hurt. And it's long lasting. The rubbers are locally made, the soles. Everything that you're seeing there, it is locally made by Ugandans, by women, by youths, by children, and each and every person that we teach in our sector. So basically when you say a, a Ugandan coming to your stall, buying that product, he or she is giving back to boy child. He or she is giving back to the women youth 
and so forth. Thank you very much. Now, coming back to Marvin, I can see, let me have a look, because I do a lot of braids. I keep doing braids every week, I think. So how did you come up with this and where are you located? Because I'm sure people watching us, the public watching us, everybody is going to try and come to your store. What should they expect? How is your price compared to the rest of the market, being that it's made here? Okay, thank you very much. Now, well, this is something that you have never seen, like hair from fiber. Can you imagine? Eh? Now, can I just give them a small introduction? Yeah. Yes. So I hope you can see the cover. It's lovely. It's very lovely. Now, let me show you the hair. You have to fear Ugandans. After God, you fear Ugandans because <laughs> this is just wonderful. Whoever knew After that God, you fear you fiber better. could make such hair. Now, you see, this is natural hair, first of all. This is not the hair you see, uh, it's made out of plastic. No, 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 no. This is 100% natural. And one of its advantages that I think women love, it's that it's not into, you know, I would come home eh, and I would find my mom hitting her head so hard, like after from the salon, right? And I'd be like, why is this woman doing that? Trust me, this has been tested. It has been tested on this wonderful lady you see here. It's a very nice packaging. It has been tested. It does not inch and it is so comfy. It is so light. You try hold it. It is very light, it's actually. Very light. And, and you can it just actually comes in a variety of put colors. Put your eh? hand through it. Yeah. There is red and there is black. And if you want, we can customize for you. Now, the good things about this product is that, well, it is, first of all, biodegradable. Like, as soon as women are done using this, they can simply return it to us or uh, dispose of it in the right place and we'll take it back and use it to make something else, something like a carpet because fiber can be used for so many things. Hence, reducing on the pollution you see in the environment, that will, that's a big change. Helpful, it like will give us that clean environment we need. And second of all, it's something that women like. Honestly, if I tell there is hair that does not inch that doesn't smell you this is a big deal guys uh after that if you want to find us honestly uh we're small we started like on 2nd of august so we're really trying it's something that's new but although we're in production and you can find us on ismail um, saloon in chireka it's next to stand big bank and the phone number is it okay if I give that? That is for later. That I'm sure later. you have your business cards right yes, there. Yeah. Please distribute them. There are so many people here. Another thing about this expo is it exposes your product to the public, to the Ugandans. I'm sure many Ugandans didn't know that we do <laughs> no, no, no. hair products, which is amazing. Um, coming to Pasi, what, do, what are your challenges the most the biggest challenges you face from your innovation um the biggest challenge that we face is the technology yes these ones we try to use our hands but when we ha get te technology when we get machines and the, the rest the le the, le uh, uh, the rest of uh, the technology we can really improve and be able to put our products on market and be able to make Uganda something beautiful to live in because it will ha we shall have no waste at all. And the second is, of course, financial, financial uh, support. If we are supported financially and by, maybe by the industries or by the government, we can really produce as many as possible and we can build Uganda and buy Uganda. That is so amazing. And um, Georgia, Georgia, what is your challenge that you face coming up with such a product? The biggest challenge as Pelera Group is um, firstly comes from where we get the sheer nuts from. The shea tree is, is a tree that takes very long to bear fruit. It takes 50 years plus to bear fruit. But now people do not know how valuable shea butter is and the shea nuts. So people end up cutting these trees for charcoal. 
So that has been our biggest challenge because therein we get inadequate supply of the shea nuts and we can't avail as much shea butter as we would want to on the market. So our biggest challenge for now is, is, is really people that, that cut down the, the, the shea trees for charcoal because when you cut it down, it is gone. It is gone. But yes, but also what we are trying to do with that is really to continue sensitizing people about how valuable these trees are because once they get to know how valuable they are, someone can know that I can actually accumulate money from here for a very long time other than me just cutting it down and I'm done with, like that's the end of me getting money out of it. Yes, so that's our biggest challenge. Then also maybe one other challenge is um, the, the, the very long process when it comes to certis certification of the product. There's, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of restrictions here and there and, and and it delays of course yes we've been able to certify some of our products about four of our products but we haven't yet certified others because of that very long process there yes thank the you so much delays. Yeah. um one thing the public needs to know is with beauty and apro it fits in with every pocket because we do make the papyrus mats for the poor to sleep on, don't we? We do that. Anybody can afford the papyrus mat to sleep on. We do produce for the, for the rich, the mazongotos. We do the best furniture through wood. We do the best leather, leather seats, leather chairs. So there is a budget for everybody. When you visit our stall, there's, uh, there's plenty of there's plenty to look at, there's plenty to buy. Please come and support us. Please come and support the science and uh, innovation event. And um, also try and create time to visit these centers. There are so many centers in the world, in, uh, in Uganda. We have one in Ruzira that does leather leather products we have another one in mokono we have the women group in a massacre i argue the world or ugandans please let us start with our own products before we travel and ending up coming up with the same products that we make here so winnie what would be your final remarks to the world what would you argue the world to hear what do you want them to know and how can the government support the centers thank you very much uh, what i can argue the country to come upon is to come and support us bring their children since it's during lockdown and so many children are idle they can keep their minds busy their hands busy Everything that we do here, it's hands-on. And what, what I would like the government to support us with is their financial support and also their technology, the machines, and also to sensitize people and coming up with a sector, a facility where the trainees can train the trainees and also the trainees can teach students and so that we can be employed as Ugandans and we make a variety of leather products and supply them in Uganda, not only in Uganda, but worldwide, when everything is coming from Uganda. Thank you. Right. Um, through my initiative, I do support these people. I do support the Uganda Women to Women initiatives. I do support them by training so that the products they can we come up with quality products that can go to the european market and i've seen that we are doing we are second from the kenyans because i do uh, visit kenyans as well as here but i've managed to to train a lot of youth a lot of women and we do produce nice products made out of that sisal, nice products made out of palm leaves, nice products made out of so many different things. And uh, personally, I would argue the, the government, not only, I, I wouldn't even mind about financial support, 
but it's more about training, training people. Mentorship is very important. Mentorship is very important. There's no point um, training someone, like for example, the girl child. We have so many centers, but after training, where do they end up? They have to end up in, in uh, they have to end up for internship. They have to end up in um, government or private sector a company so that they can train however little they get. I think that is more important than issuing them with envelopes to go and start a life. Because most of these youth, they, they've, left, they've, they've left the street or some of them are living with single parents. So even if you train a child, give them an envelope after six months with a certificate, she's going home to find a mother who has not paid rent for six months. So this child is not going to use that financial envelope to buy a sewing machine. Instead, they will what? They will pay for the rent, so they continue to live. I would recommend mentorship and a lot of training. These children are out there. I have uh, been to uh, factories where so many boys are there trying to come up with beautiful art, beautiful leather. So I think we need the government to really send out people to train and mentor our children and the youth at large than the financial support, though it is also needed. Um, Marvin, could you please give us your remarks for the day? Well, one thing I have to say is that please support Ugandans. Ugandans are brilliant. Ugandans are, don't undermine us. Eh? We're trying to make, we're trying to us, we're trying to bring good things for you. And I would advise people to come more for these expos because, man, exactly. people have brilliant ideas. Exactly. We are Ugandans, and you know how we are. But we're also very sharp. Please do not degrade undermine. someone's product because there is Louis Vuitton and all the things, please. We also have good products, like people are very sharp. So please attend Expos, and I also like the government to really sensitize people on these things, because people have brains, but they also have no information. They lack, eh? yes. Yes, that's what I would like to pass on to the public and the government. Um, final remarks from Chambogo University? Yes. Uh, I'd like to really thank our government for the opportunity that we have been given. And I would like to appeal to the people outside there that uh, bring your children, your relatives, calm yourself even if you, are, you already have an employment, uh, something you are doing, to the center of academic and professional uh, experience. Come and have that touch. Because we also have short courses whereby we can have other people to be trained, to, be, uh, to add value on what they are doing, and also to consider recycling and uh, keeping our environment safe. I would like to also appeal to the people because they have been all along uh, uh, minimizing vocational subjects. The way to go is vocationalizing ourselves and skilling, especially the youth, the new generation of Uganda. Let us put effort in uh, uh, encouraging our our children, our relatives, to endless vocational subjects. That's what I can add. Okay. Um, I would like to welcome one of our guests that has just joined us. Could you kindly introduce yourself? Thank you, uh, viewers, and uh, thanks, Beatrice. Uh, my name is Klet Wandui Masiga. I'm currently working on Silic or producing the world's most expensive fabric, or what we call the queen of fabric. And I have to say that uh, the market for this product is 
The demand is always more than the production. And I can tell you that beauty and April, if I look at everyone who has come here, right from the shoes to the top, we are talking about beauty and aprils. And when it comes to silk, um, we are working with global leaders, that's China and India. They produce, China produces 75% of all the silic that we have in the world. India produces 20%. Now, Uganda is really ripe for silic because China and India no longer have land where they grow the plants that feed the silicone to produce the silic. So in Uganda here, we have set ourselves a target of 50,000 acres of land to produce silic that will feed all Ugandans, feed East African market, and we already have demand from Marx and Spencer, Piro Cardin in France. These are global brands. So they are here working with us, and we are producing the specifications which they want. So in terms of creating uh, livelihood for Ugandans, we are, out of the 50,000 acres of land, we are directly creating uh, 300,000 jobs. And these are mainly for the youth, for the women, and the elderly. So in terms of targeting the most vulnerable people, we are there. And we really want to thank the government for committing itself to fund this particular initiative. So I would really want to thank the Minister for Science and Technology in the Office of the President for having taken the travel to ensure that this initiative succeeds. The president has it in his manifesto. We are creating 56 factories across the country in 56 districts. So each of these is going to be a hub to produce silic and its products. The demand is massive. The other thing that we are doing is to work with universities, with technical institutions, with vocational institutions, to create the necessary technical capacity to be able to leverage and to utilize the raw materials that we are going to produce to make the finished products. In terms of money, we are looking at uh, investing a total of $200 million over a period of five years. $200 million years million dollars will bring into the Ugandan economy one billion every year after five years. So this is a huge contribution to Ugandan economy. In terms of GDP, we would be making at least 3% to Ugandan GDP. And then this is also a kind of product that trickles down because 80% of the money from silic goes to the rural people who work in the mulberry gardens and they will work in these factories. And then, the other thing is that in Uganda, where you find the land is really, really remote. So by taking silk there, you're actually causing a development of peri-urban or a city in those very rural areas. Currently, we are in uh, 24 districts in Uganda, and these are spread in east, west, central, and north. So this is uh, a commodity that touches everybody. Right. Um, thank you so much for enlightening us. To add on what you just said, I think the government has really done a good job. I have had the opportunity to visit so many centers for the presidential initiative, and I noted that they have got plenty of machines to ease up the work, whereby we can now produce a lot of products to go out in the world market. Though we need more support, but uh, I feel that with this sector of science and technology, we are able to achieve this as we go along. Um, Winnie, uh, could we have some remarks, final remarks? and um, what you feel the government should do to support your initiative. Thank you very much. I, I thank 
I, I am kindly thanking the Ministry of Science and Technology, Innovation, for the support for this exhibition that they have put forward for each and every Ugandan to come and expose each and everything that they do hands-on because most especially many things that are here they are for hands-on people use their hands doing them also uh, let me talk on behalf of my college i'm under afrisa we don't only have leather industry we also have dairy industry we have beef we have piggery we have feeds we have poultry so basically if at all you you're not interested in leather we have a variety of things that you can come and learn. And we are very good people, we are welcoming, and we make sure that the person who has studied with us gets all the knowledge they need, all the necessity they need, all the consultations they need, and we also give them the platform to make their own companies. Thank you. Um. Well, I would like to get your final remarks. Sorry, we're running out of time, but I would want to hear from you. Thanks, uh, Beatrice, once again. Uh, just uh, if the cameras can face where you are, we have a sample of uh, the machines that we have brought. These are already in the country to process silk cocoons into the fabric. So the next steps is really production and uh, what the government now needs to do is to commit itself to ensuring that the target of the remaining 54 machines or factories are brought on ground. We have the raw materials already because we have already started the process. It runs in a value chain. Now the other thing that's going to happen, I think uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology is going to table the policy for civic development in the country, which will uh, set the roles and responsibilities for different players across the value chain for silk production. And then, uh, of course, the country has been producing cotton ever since. We are trying to blend the cotton and silk and see which kind of products we get. And then we want to see which kind of products are actually manufactured in Uganda and which kind of products can be manufactured elsewhere. So. Those are the things that uh, we are working forward as the next steps. Otherwise, to the country, uh, silk is one key area that's going to really cause, make a contribution to economic transformation of the country and create the many jobs that the government has always prayed to the Ugandans. Um, thank you so much, viewers, and thank you so much, UBC. Um, I would really love to send out a message to all Ugandans. Let us try to stop the negativity. Let us try to, to love our country and to love our products and to support our products. The visibility is needed out there. We need to go out in the, hugely to the world market. Um, on a day like this, we've had this expo for two days, coming to three. I should have expected a very big number coming to have a look what Ugandans can do. Let us, to stop, let us stop to criticize a lot, but try and uh, encourage and learn because there's a lot out there. If you don't come to such events, you can't know that we have got beautiful things from recyclable things. We have got uh, the Kira motors running. We have got cosmetics. We have got beautiful household stuff made out of our own materials. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, looking forward to having you at our stall, Butte and April. Thank you. Very, very.
different machinery that we came up with by our carpentry section and uh, we have different machinery that produce fabrics without using electricity. So we, we, we show uh, small looms which are called table looms, we have uh, big fly shuttle looms, then we also have spinning wheels where we manufacture thread or yarns from cotton without using electricity. So we are showing uh, different products that we have made using that technology. Yes. 
the reason why we come out with, with this idea of fabricating machinery that are simple and uh, can produce different fabric without using electricity is because uh, many people have a zeal to produce fabrics but they cannot buy the, man, the power looms which are very, very expensive and which consume a lot of power. So now we have simple technologies of growth production which we came up in place and uh, they can work very well for our people in the villages. Uh, like the spinning wheel can work well for our people who are growing cotton so that they can grow their cotton and at the end of the day they transform their cotton into different fabrics, into bed covers, into even woven warm materials that can work very well for us. So we see that this type of technology is very useful for our people in Uganda who are, who are aiming at the cottage industries. We can produce a lot of fabrics using just a simple technology and without electricity. Yeah, uh, our inspiration, especially on the spinning machine, is uh, because our farmers were selling cotton uh, at a very cheap price. So we bring this spinning technology to enable our farmers to produce yarns or threads from the cotton they have farmed and then make fabrics out of it using the weaving machinery so that we can, at the end of the day, the farmers have, a, have to sell it a higher price. So that is how, 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 how we have been inspired. And for the weaving looms, uh, we hope and we just uh, have a plan that uh, at least we have different cottage industries that our people are equipped with enough cottage industries to make cloth production in every region, in every area. Those who love to go into cloth production can do it even in their homes. At least let someone have a loom and they can produce their own cloth instead of buying the second hand clothes that we are buying. So that is the inspiration we have for our people in Uganda. This is uh, Magara Skin Care. Uh, my name is Musazi Joram. I'm the Productions Manager. And I also deal part in uh, product research and development. Uh, Magara Skin Care is an HBT of URI. Uh, on the note that uh, we are almost one of the pioneers of Uganda Research Institute. Uh, Amagra Skin Care, basically, we deal in a natural skin care routines. Amagara, Amagara means life, life, and we look into breathing life into your skin. That's one of our mottos here. Uh, we basically look at uh, sourcing skin care products from uh, vegetables and fruits. It's quite amazing, but uh, we really have a very big range of lotions, hand and body lotions, shower gels, shampoo, hand sanitizers, hand wash, and other products that are still in development. But basically our uniqueness is in, the, is in sourcing ingredients naturally and uh, locally here in Uganda. Um, Magara Skin Care uh, deals in uh, Lotions, which are ingredients, are naturally sourced. Uh, for example, we have uh, fruits that include uh, papaya, we have aloe vera, we have mango, we have cucumber, we have carrot, and uh, these ones differently have a very good contribution to one skin. Uh, basically, when we look into fruits, fruits are, for example, papaya, we have papaya body lotions. Uh, we have that we have cucumber body lotions, we have aloe vera body lotions, we have a mango body lotions, hand and body lotions, we have creams in the same fruits and vegetables. But these fruits aim at a different point to affect one's skin. Uh, most of the skin problems that we face include uh, dry skin, oily skin, greasy skin, and uh, sensitive skins. And uh, we, 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 we came down in research and realized that these fruits basically can also contribute 
and also alleviate some of those skin problems. Uh, one of them is papaya. Papaya is, a, is good in smooth skin, smoothening. Yeah, and uh, if someone has a rough skin, papaya, as popo, it has an enzyme called papain, and also when it's applied on skin, it can do that smoothening and that softening, and also does some exfoliating because of that enzyme. Uh, the other one is cucumber. Cucumber basically is uh, is moisturizing. Cucumber as a, as a fruit is 90% water. So if you need some more water in your skin, moisturizing your skin, one of the biggest problems in skin is dry skin. So as a mother, you exist also address dry skin. And one of the lotions that can properly do that is uh, cucumber and also aloe vera body lotions. Uh, another body category that we have are carrots. Carrot. Carrot is good in uh, in sunscreening, but also good good in also treating skin. Thus, there are people who have uh, acne breakouts in skin, and it's also good in uh, in in doing that because it's a good. It has some good antibacterial effects and antiseptic as well. Uh, carrot it also has a small portion of uh, contributing to anti aging. Though we are still having uh, having it in development to see whether really. It does anti-aging, but because of its uh, com component, bitter carotene, it, uh, what it does, it also builds the collagen in your muscles and also retains that, uh, that, that supple of the skin. So basically, that is a very brief summary of the, of the products and what they can really do here in Amagora Skin Care. We have shower gels that have carrot, we have shower gels that have mint, we have carrot shower gels that have uh, pineapple and also. Welcome to ATCG Solutions. I'm Nicole Etwine. Here in Nakaiburi, laboratory technologist at ATCG Solutions. We are a level two biotechnology research and diagnostic lab. We were birthed with a goal of One Health for Africa and believe that the private sector can contribute to health by providing reliable, timely, and accurate molecular-based tests to the people. We were founded in 2013 by our professor, Fred Ruyanjira, and have been housed under Uganda Industrial Research Institute since 2016. Under the Diagnostics Department, we offer HIV and Hepatitis B training and variable tests, relationship tests, which include paternity tests, maternity tests, or sibling tests, in light of the ongoing pandemic, we are accredited by the Ministry of Health and offer COVID-19 tests to people in the country. We offer various COVID-19 PCR packages for the convenience of our clients, ranging from home to office collections and here at our facility. Our turnaround times are unmatched with dispatch of results between 5 to 12 hours. We pride ourselves in delivering timely, reliable, and accurate results for our clients with unsurpassed client satisfaction and convenience. Under the research department, we thrive to apply innovation in conjunction with state-of-the-art technology to increase the scope of existing scientific knowledge in the following sectors, human, animal, and plant studies. ATCG Solutions also offers internship opportunities for students hoping to further their knowledge in molecular biology. In a nutshell, ATCG Solutions has provided a hub for young, brilliant scientists, much like ourselves, and we hope in the future to be instrumental in the spearheading of scientific breakthroughs. I am called Miriam Wegoe. Uh, I work as a software design scientist at Uganda Industrial Research Institute under the instrumentation unit. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our innovation at Uganda Research Institute called the Portable Neonatal Warmer. In 2017, a team of uh, URI staff under the instrumentation unit uh, went to do a needs assessment across the country in Uganda and this was in the western region, eastern and, uh, and northern region. We were able to visit about uh, eight clinical sites, namely Guru Referral Hospital, Soroti Referral Hospital, 
and Ibarra Referral Hospital to mention that, but a few. Uh, during this uh, period, we were carrying out a medical equipment needs assessment. When we visited these sites, we realized that yes, there were equipments within the hospitals, but most of those equipments were donated and many of them, there were actually few equipments in uh, the hospitals, but yet again, we found that most of them were obsolete. So when we came down to carry out an analysis, we zeroed down on a few uh, equipments that were feasible to produce at Uganda Industrial Research Institute. And one of which uh, realized that there was a very big need when it came to warming premature babies. In the hospitals, we discovered that most of the warming was done by kangaroo method, having the mothers and fathers uh, stay awake for long hours just to keep their babies warm since their temperatures were below the recommended, recommended range. So it's from this basis that we were able to come up with the portable neonate warmer, which we have been developing since 2017. We realized that the need or the actual problem was that we had prematures who suffer from hypothermia, and that is their temperature is normally below uh, 34 or 36 degrees. So they need to be warmed in order to uh, get their temperatures to the normal body temperature, which is recommended as 36.5. So developing this portable neonatal warmer, it is a medical device that within which when you insert a premature, it's able to warm the premature to the recommended temperature that is between 36.5 to a maximum of 38 degrees. I am going to show you how it works uh, and how it, we feel it will save lives, especially for the premature babies in Uganda. About the portable neonatal warmer, uh, our project has about five modules that are embedded or work together. The first module I'll, um, I'll mention is the baby warmer. And this is where the premature is uh, put in order to keep warm. Then we have what we call the uh, temperature monitoring system that monitors the temperature levels of uh, the baby, of the contact surface area where the baby is laid, and of uh, the heating source uh, which generates the heat in order to warm the baby. Then we also have what we call uh, the baby bassinet or what you could call a carrier. Uh, these are normal baskets, uh, baby baskets, in which babies are stored, maybe when they've gone to sleep. So we also developed that and included it as a module. Then we also have what we call uh, the water bath. The water bath is basically to be able to uh, melt the heating source, since it cannot be melted using direct heat. I will start with the baby warmer. The baby warmer is made up of a normal fabric that can be got from uh, uh, Uganda, and in it we have compartments where you insert uh, the, the heating source. You also insert what we call a blanket or a resistor to gradually uh, absorb the heat, and also where you place uh, the baby. And then finally, uh, the, where we monitor the baby. Now, the fifth module I had not mentioned is what we call the heating pad or the heat source. This heat source is inserted into the baby's warmer in order to help with uh, warming the baby. Now, this heating pad is a phase change material that can be got in Uganda and is available on the market. What normally happens when you look at a phase change material, you're changing from one state to another. In this case, you're changing from a liquid state to a solid state. And how that is done is by simply activating the solution using what we call a spring activator in order to help activate this part. So during the activation process, it undergoes a process called crystallization. During that process, the pad temperature rises from a room temperature to 58 degrees as soon as the spring activator is clicked. What you see here is a, a change of state. The first part I showed you is a liquid state, whereas the, the second part is solid state. 
meaning that uh, this part already underwent crystallization. So in order to melt it, we have to put it in the uh, water bath in order to get it to a liquid state. The preparation of this part takes approximately under one hour and uh, we believe, uh, we, we try to make it easy for the users so that at the end of the day, in case there's no main in rural areas, electricity, they are able to use this part by dipping it in uh, hot uh, water with their saucepans and securities and are able to melt the part. Having verified that the potent Boniona Tooma 1 is going to be able to save lives, two, it is feasible, three, it, all the materials are locally available, and we hope that it will be a cheap product compared to uh, the baby warmer, electrical baby warmers in hospital. What we envision is with the support of government, definitely we have worked with government and they have supported us, but we need to take this product to the next level. Currently, we have been able to advance the initial prototype. Right now, what we are left with is a clinical or lab testing. So we are hoping that uh, through this uh, visibility, we'll be able to get more funding from government and well wishers in order to advance this uh, prototype to clinical trials and eventually roll it out on the market for commercialization uh, under Uganda Industrial Research Institute. My name is Ronald Cheyune. I am an assistant research officer working with Uganda Industrial Research Institute and a team member on the ECGF. This is the ECGF, electronically controlled gravity fed effusion set. It is basically an effusion controller that is comprised of uh, the sensor module the actuator module, the control unit, and the battery management system. This was made to improve the quality of care given by the normal giving set. Because with the normal giving set, you have the roller clamp that adjusts itself sometimes and we, from the needs assessment, felt we need to make an intervention through the ECGF. What a doctor needs to do is to insert in the infusion volume as well as infusion time. The infusion controller will take over the monitoring of the full therapy. If there is any under infusion, over infusion, slow rate, or any blockage, the device through alarms will alert the doctor to attend to the patient. The actuator module is what regulates the number of drops as prescribed by the doctor corresponding to the infusion rate. And this is as a result of the feedback got from the drop sensor module. This device here is powered by a rechargeable battery that you can recharge and use in our local setting. We came up with the ECGF device, after we did a thorough needs assessment in various hospitals, and we got feedback from clinicians about the need to improve the quality of care normally given by the normal giving set, especially for infants below five years. Currently, we are working on integrating the different modules that I've spoken about into a more portable product. After that, we hope to do more clinical trials. And after successful clinical trials, we shall do mass production.
I'm Ruth Nakaziwe, a Ford research scientist here in the Ford Lab of Uganda Industrial Research Institute. The Ford Lab falls under the, the product development department. Here, what we do is we develop Ford prototypes up to, we, start, we develop the prototypes, study them, study their shelf life up to the, the point of commercialization where we feel that the products developed are fit for, are viable for commercialization. Yeah. By the time they, we, 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 we deem them viable, they will be able to stand on, to be, not to, to get spoiled on the, on the shelf and uh, all the sensory characteristics will be appealing within the period stated as being shelf life stable. What's the purpose? Or what's the, why do we do product, food product development? The, based on the fact that our economy is agro-based, we want to support the economy through uh, uh, availing skills to, the, to, to entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial Ugandans. We, we, give, we provide, we give skills provide them with skills in processing and preservation of agro, agro, agro produce. Yeah. What inspires us most is to, for, we, we see that in Ugandans we lose a lot of produce during bumper harvest. For example, we Ugandans grow a lot of tomatoes, a lot of fruits and vegetables mainly tomatoes, mangoes, oranges in eastern Uganda, and a variety of fruits all over the country, Arua and the rest of the country, together with other, other agricultural produce like cassava, like any other, any other produce that Ugandans avail to us with interest of adding value. We do provide knowledge and skills of processing and preserving them in order to extend the shelf life. Our expectations basically here in the Ford Lab of uh, Uganda Industry Research Institute is to acquire better state-of-the-art technology that will help us foster Ugandan, Ugandan skills of processing and preservation. Yeah, we want to make them better processors. Whereby, if a, if a farmer has a, a big harvest and cannot sell off all the harvest to different markets, they can as well opt to add value to the very produce that they, sell, that they, that, that, that they have in plenty. Yeah. Thank you. My names are Rose Namukasa from Uganda Industrial Research Institute.